I have been on a mission to take my woodworking to the next level, and today we're gonna to learn how to make this amazing, flexible, and interlocking panel. This allows us to make some pretty incredible shapes in our woodworking and think outside the 90 degree box. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. I'm starting off by milling up my own lumber that I got from a local farmer. This technique requires the wood to be a half inch thick. And of course, you could buy half inch thick lumber, but man, I really enjoy the resawing and milling process. It just sets the perfect tone when starting off a new project. The last time I did this, I was in high school and Mr. Myers had us cut a whole bunch of slats and then glue it to an old pair of jeans to allow that movement. This is a much cooler process that takes three different bits and a few more steps. This all comes as a kit. I'll have everything linked down below. First thing we need to do is mount the big profile bit in the router. This is going to take four passes. We're gonna run it through once, flip the board this way, run it through again, flip the board over this way, one, and another one here. Then we're gonna push our fence back for a second pass because we don't wanna do it all in one pass. So it actually takes eight passes to get the profile on this board. I suggest cutting your test pieces and then saving those pieces with the kit so you could always go back, set the bit height and the fence depth with these little pieces. But basically, this is the profile that we're gonna cut first. Doesn't look like much now, but check this out. So we got that profile cut, two passes on each side. So now I need to push the fence back and do four more passes for that final shaping there. So now using the second bit and the set, I'm gonna cut a groove on each side, but it suggests using the table saw first to create a curve to make the routing a little bit easier. The cool thing about this bit set is it leaves enough room in the middle to split these into two. That is so satisfying. So I've got all these other ones too. If I connect them, there's so many possibilities with this. This is just so fun to play with. It's, it's just very, very satisfying. We're gonna wing this part, but we're gonna make a little cabinet. It's gonna be an oval and the doors are going to open up and then reveal the inside of the cabinet. I've never done this. This is a, this is an experiment. Maybe this doesn't work out. Maybe this works out better than expected. We'll find out. So I decided I want this oval to be about 20 inches wide and about 16 inches deep. The height of the doors are gonna be nine inches. So I can take all these pieces and cut a bunch of nine inch tall pieces. I got a couple of tape measures set up for my oval, 20 inches wide with a depth of 16. These guys, after being cut, I just wanted to make sure that they'll be able to bend in the radius that I want them to. This is so fun. I need to make an end piece because I don't want the edges of the doors to be this little nub. So let's make that little, we've been calling it the termination piece. I think they're just a little bit too wide. We're designing on the fly here and I'm just kind of going by visual feel. So I'm gonna rip them down just a little bit more. So for the top and bottom, we're gonna use plywood. That way it doesn't expand and contract with the seasons. I'm worried that if I use solid wood, that it might bind. And so we're gonna use plywood that doesn't move with the seasons. I don't have any red oak plywood. I didn't want to buy a full sheet of red oak plywood 
So instead, I'm going to make my own. So I got some Baltic birch and some red oak veneer, and we're just going to make our own. This goes into the veneer bag. Basically just a huge glorified clamp. You can't get, it's really hard to get clamps in the middle. This bag makes it super easy. This is my current state of the CNC. I'm working on my finish, getting ready to bottle it up. I don't have the formula nailed down yet, but we're really, really close. I've gone through dozens and dozens of tests. We're almost there. We're almost there. At first, I'm only gonna sell this to Patreon members. That way I can gather feedback over the next year to see how it works in different climates and to see, just to see how it works and, and everybody's experience with that. After that, then we'll look into getting it manufactured. But also, I'm just gonna make a video on the exact ratios and the in exact ingredients. So if you just wanna make it and you don't wanna buy it, you'll have that option. All right, so uh, ugh, let's clean this up. Our homemade walnut, our, our walnuts. <laughs> I always got walnut on the brain. Our homemade red oak plywood is ready to go. So we are going to cut the oval shapes out on the CNC. is looking good so we cut two of these this groove is for the door and then this groove right here is for the outside wall which that's going to be very experimental so this is going to go in there like that and this like this Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So this little groove right here is for the outside wall. What I am thinking is taking multiple sheets of veneer, layering them together and just jamming it in there and gluing it up. This may or may not work. Everything is an experiment. So there's one layer, two layers, three i don't know if we can get four in there or not four is a really tight fit all right that's uh that's gonna work it's either gonna be three or four yeah four might be too tight we're cutting the width of the veneer at the table saw because i need it to be pretty exact i'm going to use a piece of plywood to hold it down flat and then I got this board attached to my fence to make sure the veneer doesn't slip in underneath. So the inside pieces have to be cut shorter because of the way circles and ovals work. So I've been cutting each piece to fit. Circles and ovals are hard. Circles and ovals are hard. Strategy. Okay, don't forget to put the doors in before gluing this together. Don't forget to put the doors in before gluing this together. With me. Don't forget to put the doors in before gluing this together. You at home. <laughs> before we put that together, I'm waxing all the pieces with my special formula that I'm still working on. We're getting there, I'm still working on it. Got the door in there, not gonna forget the door. I got four of these strips. I'm not gonna cover the whole thing in glue. I'm just gonna put a strip along the middle and then along the edges. I don't have a, a good glue with a long open time. So it's kinda, kinda racing against the clock here. And then the next one. I just learned today that not all woodworkers have a Daniel. And that sucks, because having a Daniel is nice. 
You are a nice to have. Thank you. You are a luxury. You're more than a nice to have. You're a damn luxury. Oh, yeah. Uh, see? You see why you have to have a Daniel? He will correct you. So this one, I, it's got a little broken spot on there. See if we can fix it. I want the wax to be facing the wax. Yeah, I need. We waxed the inside. So this one has to go this way. This might work. Oh, it's popping in. It's popping off. Somebody's yelling at the screen. There's a better way. <sighs> By far the most difficult glue up. Uh, it was stressful. I'm hoping I wasn't stressing Daniel out too much. Um, but it's together. Uh, the doors are sliding somewhat easy. Probably use a little bit more wax in there. But right now it is together. I think what I totally forgot to do was make handles for this before putting the wax on there. Um, I can either sand the wax off or add uh, like a physical metal handle or something on there. But we got past the hardest part. Ooh, that's actually sliding good now. So I got, there's a little bit of bowing on the ends here. I think if I cut a piece of oak, cut a dado in there, slap it on the edges, that will straighten that up, cover up the ply edge. And thank you, Dale, for your help. I appreciate it. Sorry if I stress you out. You're good. Whew. It's satisfying. It's stressful and satisfying at the same time. All right, let's uh, let's make those those ends. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Let's glue those in the. Oh. Yep. Oh my gosh. Gosh, that's so. I know I've said satisfying too many times, but dang it, it's so. It's so satisfying. So, next up, we need to make some edge banding out of some solid red oak. Going to pick up some red oak, and while doing so, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Squarespace has been my main website for over 10 years. I used to be a web developer. I used to develop websites from scratch. I don't want to do that anymore. Not, not even a little bit. And that is where Squarespace has come in and just made my life so much easier. With Squarespace, you can sell both physical and digital. If you don't know this, I sell merch on my website through a third party called Printful, which integrates seamlessly into Squarespace. There's a little plugin by Squarespace that works with Printful and just makes my life so much easier. There is this thing by Squarespace called the Fluid Engine, and you don't need to know what the Fluid Engine is, except it makes your website look good on mobile, tablet, and a desktop. And your website reformats itself to look good on mobile, tablet, or the desktop. You ever look at a website on your phone that wasn't made for mobile and you're like zooming and yuck, yuck. You don't have to worry about that with Squarespace. It's gonna look good no matter what. Maybe you're a lot like me, an artist, a metal worker, a woodworker, a crafter, whatever. You need a place to show off your work. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. If you want, you can have a password protected website. So it's just you, you and your close pals just mingling on the internet. Visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, we got our red oak. We're ready to head back. Edge band this guy, make some feet, add some drawer pulls. Door pulls? Drawer pulls? We gotta add little handles to the front. We're almost done.
This is so satisfying. Have I mentioned that this project is satisfying yet? If I haven't, it is. On this edge band. Printed out some templates for the feet. So the feet just get glued to the bottom and then I wax the outside of the cabinet with my formula. We'll talk more about my finishing process next month. And then added some handles and this came out absolutely phenomenal the word of the day is satisfying it is just so oh i love it i love it this technique right here just allows me to do so many crazy things the possibilities are endless with all the crazy shapes that we can get into i have been forcing myself to get more creative this year is all about creativity and thinking outside the box. Every single day, I force myself to sketch up a new idea. Whether or not I make these ideas, it doesn't matter. The, the, the purpose of this is to get more creative with my designs, and that's this one right here. I have been collecting a lot of ideas and doing a lot of research on what it takes to be creative, even if you don't consider yourself a creative person. I've taken a lot of notes. That is a future video, either next month or the month after that. I still got a little bit more research to do. That's gonna be a really good video. I'm just really excited about the future of this channel and where I'm taking it, because it's all about creativity and thinking outside the box now. Please subscribe if you're not already, and if you haven't seen it, check out this record player stand that does not have any 90 degree joints in it whatsoever. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.